Today on Engineering Newswire, we're designing Delta Wing's 70 mile per gallon road car that tops out at 130 miles per hour, autonomously landing Morpheus in the dark, and building a jet powered flying car. But this one tops out at 550. Delta Wing Technologies is known for designing race cars, but they think that many of the handling benefits of the race car can translate to the street. But I'm just not sure that it will translate to consumers. The first image of the street legal four passenger car shows the car's unique look, featuring a rear engine design to significantly decrease weight on the front axle for reduced rolling resistance, increased powertrain efficiency, and improved aerodynamics. The design also allows for increased efficiency, which the company says could be the solution for manufacturers facing stricter fuel economy and emission standards, specifically the corporate average fuel economy standard of 54.5 miles per gallon by the year 2025. According to Delta Wing Technologies, the car could potentially reach 0 to 60 miles per hour in about 6 seconds, with a top speed of 130 miles per hour and a fuel efficiency of up to 70 miles per gallon when using a small displacement 4-cylinder engine producing between 85 and 110 horsepower. The company claims the architecture is 35% lighter, requires 35% less horsepower, and consumes 35% less fuel than most other car designs. Delta Wing is currently seeking OEM partners to help bring this design to life, choosing to partner with mass market auto companies to expand on the design's efficiency and environmental benefits. On May 28th, NASA landed an unmanned spacecraft on a rugged planetary surface, in the pitch dark. The free flight test was the first of its kind for NASA's Autonomous Landing Hazard Avoidance Technology, or ALHAT. During testing, Morpheus, an unmanned spacecraft capable of carrying 1,100 pounds of cargo, powered its way up to more than 800 feet into the dark Florida sky at NASA's Kennedy Space Center using solely LHAT's hazard detection system for guidance. The hazard detection system pointed its sensors at the hazard field and made a mosaic of flash LiDAR three-dimensional range images encompassing the hazard field. The system then stitched the flash LiDAR images together to create a three-dimensional map of the landing site, analyze the map, and select the best landing sites. According to Eric Roback, LHAT flash LiDAR lead engineer at NASA's Langley Research Center in Virginia, once this technology goes into service, the days of landing 30 miles away from your intended target in fear of hazardous craters and rocks will be over. The LHAT hazard detection system brings together expertise from three different NASA centers. Langley created the LiDAR sensors, NASA's Jet Propulsion Lab developed the pointing and real-time image processing technology, and NASA's Johnson Space Center developed a guidance, navigation, and control technology. Jet-powered flying car, here I come. In other automotive news this week, Greg Brown and Dave Fawcett have announced plans for a jet-powered flying car, the GF7. And in a recent interview with Gizmag, the team explained that the vehicle will be able to reach heights of up to 38,000 feet, with a top speed of 550 miles per hour. However, it will only be able to stay in flight for short amounts of time, about 700 to 1,000 miles depending on conditions. So its cruising altitude will remain below 28,000 feet. Powered by a 50 kilowatt battery while on the ground, the GF7 will be able to reach speeds of up to 100 miles per hour on the road, reaching 0 to 60 in 7 to 12 seconds. The battery is charged during flight by the jet engine and would allow the vehicle to travel up to 120 miles on a full charge. The team is working to have a prototype in the sky in the next four years, and while it may be the first flying car with real world viability, it also comes with a hefty price tag of three to five million dollars. Do you have story ideas? Comment below and we'll cover them in an upcoming episode. For the PD&D channel, I'm David Manti, and this has been your Engineering Newswire.